You got a bass? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, he's right there. Are you sure you got a bass? Yeah. Are you sure you got a bass? Oh, that's I think Houston caught a bass. <laughs> Y'all were fishing in the same spot, and <laughs> Kobe wasn't sure who had the fish on the hook. So what's up guys, we are back with another video. Before we get started, go down there and subscribe. We're going to have fish and mail and like this video, so this kid will talk. Hey, he talked on the catfishing video. Yeah. Talked all the way to the frying pan eating them catfish. <laughs> hey, we had a catfish that was talking to him that day. Yeah. You weren't even over there. What's this, uh, you've been napping? You got a napping with your forearm on your head or something? Well, I was, yeah. Yeah. I wasn't sleeping, though. Yeah. So what are we gonna do today, guys? We're down at the creek. Um, it was supposed to be sunshiny and 80 degrees. You boys wanted to go to the creek. What are we gonna do? Uh, I think we can fish with these right here. <laughs> Check these things out. Guys, I found these fishing poles at Walmart the other day. You talk about a micro fishing rod. We've done a lot of uh, micro fishing challenges in the past. And uh, these are uh, definitely micro. They're fully extended right now. That rod pulls out of there. I mean, they kind of, you can put one of these in your glove box or your pickup. Now, I don't know, uh, you'll have to twist it a little bit to get to go down. I don't know how big of a fish we can catch in the creek right now. Three pounds. Three pounds. Okay. Well, they have three pound test line on them. There's a nest. A bluegill nest? Oh, there sure is. I see it. So, uh, we're not trying to catch the biggest fish. We're trying to catch the smallest fish. Yeah, huh. it'd be kind of hard. We're gonna do a little micro fishing challenge. Yeah. We just wanted to get out of the house today and do something fun. And... Oh, look at all the fur too. Oh, yep. It's beautiful. The blue herons have been here, huh? Yeah. So Jacoby and Houston and Gemma and Earl and I decided to come down to the creek and see if we can even make one of these micro rods do anything. They're very uh, slow geared. You have to reel pretty fast with them, but we'll try a couple jigs. I tied the same size jig on for both boys. We'll see what we can find. Is there? Yeah, there was. <laughs> My guys, this is actually hard. It's a tiny little thing, isn't it? Yes. We may, uh, because you, the, they're geared so slow, what we may end up having to do is put a little, a little bobber above a jig because you can't hardly keep it off the bottom of the creek right now, so. What? Jacoby's starting his, I got, oh, no, I don't. I got, oh, no, I don't. A finger workout. There's another little bluegill nest right there, so. It is starting to warm up just enough that the, uh, the bluegill are starting to go on their beds. The bass ought to be spawning in our pond right now, too. Yeah. What are you doing? I don't know. I don't know what you're doing either. Do you got a fish? Or are you just back up here hung up again? Oh, you got a fish. <laughs> First fish of the day on the micro rod goes to Houston. <laughs> hey, it's a teeny tiny green sunfish. Well, it's a good thing they're called mini. If you, if you hold it close enough to the camera, it looks like a big green sunfish, yeah. right? Uh oh. You may need that. Better hold on to that. Yeah, see, hold him out real close to me. Ugh. Hold him out real far from your body. Ugh. No, hold him out. There Ugh. you go. Oh man, Ugh. he's huge. He's huge. Houston can't even hold him up. I can't. Oh. Bye. You're not a very good actor. <laughs> Hopefully you're a better fisherman than an actor. Yeah. We're gonna try a little, a little different strategy because these reels just are so slow geared. I put a bobber above Houston's jig and uh, left him about two feet of line. We're gonna see if that works and if, 
If it works for him, we'll put one on Kobe's. Just ease it. Like, don't just reel it. Just kind of move it a little bit. You didn't give Kobe anywhere to fish. You're blocking his spot. <laughs> Houston got one. All right, Kobe. I'm just going to tell you, most of those bluegill are not going to hang out right out here in the middle. They're going to be like hiding along the rocks, along that rock ledge or out by a big rock. So fishing right out in the middle, probably not going to be your best bet, okay? Okay. What happened? I saw your bobber go under. What? It's, oh, it's way under now. Get him. Oh, you still got one on there? Let it sit. Let it sit. Stop. They're following it. I can see the fish. They're still nibbling at your at your jig. Uh, hey. I didn't do it. Oh, Kobe, you're underwater. You got him? Kobe got one. Did he come off or you still got him? I uh, lost him, I think. I think Kobe switched to the other side of the dam. He's changing it up a little bit. Oh, I saw that. Get him. Dude. I don't, it would look like something come up and tried to eat your bobber, didn't it? Yeah. That might have been a bass. Might have been. Jeez, why don't you fish in the same spot, fellas? I'm sorry that he took my right side. Did you get him? I don't know. Well, I watched your bobber go under and I heard him pulling drag. Oh yeah, you got a fish. <laughs> He's definitely micro. Tighten your drag up a little bit. I can hear it. There you go. Earl, get back. Earl, watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Oh, looky there. Another green sunfish. Yep. And a mosquito. That's some micro fishing, I guess. Yeah. It's kind of a challenge, you know? It's really actually kind of harder than, uh, than with a big fishing pole. Yeah, it is. Because when your bobber goes under... You try to set the hook and nothing happens, huh? Yeah. Finally did the deal. I jumped off the dam for a dollar. You'll jump off the dam for a dollar? Yep. Oh! <laughs> you got a fish? Oh, you sure do. I saw him jerking. What's this one, Earl? Did you catch a bass this time? Nope. Look at how pretty that one is. Yeah. Your fish are getting bigger. Well, he inhaled that little thing. That little crawdad. I'm going to have to... Uh oh That little I'm gonna crawdad. Have to, well, that's a little crawdad bait that's on that jig head. Whoa, Earl. <laughs> you're going to get a... Hey, Earl. You're going to get a hook in your mouth, buddy. Hey, quit. Earl wants to fish, man. This one is actually pretty. Look at its fins. Yep. Earl, you think you took Bella's position as the fish catcher? You ready? You ready? Where'd he go? Earl, where'd it go? You mean change your jig out for a different one? I think Houston's caught four fish. I'm sorry. Five fish. All right, so we're going to switch it up a little bit for Jacoby. I already tied one of these on for Houston to fish under his bobber. It's hard to do this one-handed. But we're just fishing with a little uh, trout slayer, trout magnet kit, and uh, just some different colored little crawfish, teeny tiny little crawfish, because that's what these fish feed on in the creek. So 
We should be used to it, right? Yeah. Yeah, Kobe got one finally. Are you just playing with him? You're gonna, whoa, he jumped him out of the water. Kobe's so excited he can barely contain himself here. Hold him up, let's see. Yeah, making the change to that little crawfish, that little crappie magnet made a difference, didn't it? Or a trout magnet. Yeah. They're all green sunfish though, I've noticed. That's the only thing we've caught so far. <laughs> you got a fish or a rock, Kobe? Oh, you sure do. It's hard to tell with that rod because it doesn't bend or move or anything. That's a good one there. Oh, the sun come out. I'm sure glad. Hopefully it'll stay out for a minute. So how many is that for you? Two? Yeah. Oh, Earl, there's your chance, buddy. There's your chance. <laughs> How's your chance, Earl? Here. Now there's a, we can see them, but they just don't show up on the camera, but there's four or five little bass and a ton of different uh, little sunfish in there. I don't know, they're probably mostly green sunfish. Oh, Houston got one up there. You hear what he said? He said, I caught the prettiest one of the day. Looked like he spit it out for a second. Kobe got him another one. He found a hot spot right here, didn't you? Still green sunfish. We can't get one of those bass to bite to save our life. <laughs> oh no, that one's a really nice bluegill. Errol. Hey, you gonna get the hook, buddy? Yeah, that's a nice bluegill. You know what? Wish we'd have brought a bucket. We'd take that one over to the pond, you know it? Yeah. That's a good one. Your fish has a worm? Kobe's fish has a uh, crawfish in its mouth. A little crawdad lure, huh? Yeah. Here. I'm trying to give him to you. There you go. Get it out with those bluegill like that it's hard to hold them by the lip so if you'll just squeeze the fish itself that works better sometimes okay a few videos back you got another one no i think you come off a few videos back i had i don't remember if it was an email or a comment or something um a lady was like kind of upset with me she said why does everything have to be a competition like Houston and Jacoby it was to see who could find the most mushrooms and see who could find the biggest mushrooms and then we were catfishing you know who, who catch the biggest catfish and stuff I saw your bobber go under and I, I don't really have a great answer why everything's a competition other than that's just what boys do isn't it like we compete you know who can throw a rock the farthest who can spit the farthest who can throw a baseball the farthest? Who can hit the baseball the farthest? Who catch the most fish? Kobe, he just uses his chin to hold the rod. I don't know why we compete in everything we do. I think it's just the nature of boys. Oh, you already threw it back. I missed it. I was talking. That happens to me a lot, you know what? Ooh, oh man, I saw that. Hey. Why don't we try taking that bobber off for a second and see if you can get one of those bass to bite that thing. Okay. That'd be awesome to catch a half a pound bass on that tiny little rod. Push it down and you take it off the bottom and then you can hold the bottom and you take it off the top. Does that make sense? See how it pops up? Pretty decent sized little bass right along that rock ledge and by that rock right there, okay? I mean, you might have to throw it a little farther than that.
Yep, I saw that. Houston's getting out fish now. He don't even know it. I think he's on five or six up there too. Let's see that one. That one's. That one might actually be just a straight bluegill or a cross between a, a bluegill and a, a long, not a long ear, but a red ear, but I can't tell. It's still too small. Probably just a bluegill. Are you a fisherman now? Nice! Toby got the biggest green sunfish of the day for sure. Hold that thing up here. That's a good one. Look, it's got a big scar on the side. A blue heron tried to eat it. I see we go try some other spot on the creek. I know y'all are catching. I know y'all are catching fish, but the bass are not wanting to bite here. I want to go see if there's fish in the rest of the creek any other holes Kobe's like I I'm not leaving fish to go find fish yeah. all right Earl well appreciate that buddy uh we're gonna go try us another spot on the creek see if we can find a bass that'll bite Jim are you riding you along for the ride let's go Earl Did you cast it backwards or uh, where'd it go? Right here. <laughs> I caught a big stick. Oh, that's what you get for laughing. You cast yours a whole three feet, barely hit the water. It did better than his did. Not that time. Or you were hitting Or there was a fish. I think you have a fish. Yeah, you got a fish on. Oh, this is one. Yeah. That's my fish. That's my fish. Okay. Sounds like you need to tighten your drag up again. Pretty little. Long ear sunfish. A little bitty guy. Here, hold the fish by the body. There you go. You, you have my line. All right, little buddy. Go grow up. We'll catch you again. Too slow, Earl. Yeah, too slow. Yeah. The creek is looking really pretty right now. There's not too much moss and algae. There's not a whole lot of fish yet. It's still a little bit early. The water's still pretty chilly. Um, a lot of these fish come up from the lake. You know, this little bluegill come up in here and spawn and stuff. And the little bass, you usually... This time of year, we'll catch a few small bass, a couple small mouth, and you just never know what you might find in the creek. But oh, look at all the carp! What'd you see? There's a whole bunch of suckers. I said carp. My bad. Oh, they're tiny. They're well. They're a, they're a, they're basically a carp. We have a lot of suckers that come up in the creek. I don't know if you guys can see them on the camera or not, but they're not going to bite a lure. They're a they're a bottom feeder. That's why they're eating all that uh, that eating right there where that leaf pile is and stuff. But looks to me like he's hung up. Yeah. Hey, you can go swimming. Bass. You got a bass? Yeah. Are you sure? Are you sure you got a bass? Yeah. Are you sure you got a bass? Oh, that's I think Houston caught a bass. <laughs> Y'all were fishing in the same spot and 
Kobe wasn't sure who had the fish on the hook. <laughs> I was watching Houston catch it. Come here. I was watching Houston catch it, Kobe. I saw it bite his hook. And then you said, I got a bass. There's another one in there, though. Maybe he'll bite, too. Wait, Dad. Wait, what? Did have a bucket in there? No. No. That little spotted bass is going to stay in the creek. He's got red eyes. They call him a Kentucky spotted bass. Pick him up here and we'll show him off. Is that rare? No, it's not necessarily rare. But you see how they kind of look red? Yeah. And they have a... Kentucky when they get a little bigger, they have a big spot on their tongue. But they're a pretty little fish. Are you talking about Kentucky fried chicken? <laughs> Pull that hook out. There you go. All right. Let's let this little guy go. Kobe got something. What do you got? What do you got? Bass. You got the other little bass? Yep. Sure enough, it's almost like they're brothers. Yours might be a little bit bigger than Houston's. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Don't stand under the log I'm on. Hey, you just walked under the log I'm standing on. Hey, that's not my fault. I said don't. Well, I'm trying to fish here. I think it's still strong enough to hold me. The uh, raccoons have been hanging out up here. Oh, yeah. What's the worst that could happen, right? Right. Uh, it could snap and break and we all fall. And then <laughs> break a leg. Hey, Dad, break a leg. I'd rather not. It'd be hard to do my job if I have a broken leg. Yeah. You got a little bass? Oh, yeah, I see it. But there's a bluegill on my hook. Oh. <laughs> you were wanting to catch the bass and the bluegill how it was already on the hook, huh? So sitting here on the creek bank on a Friday afternoon, the boys are out of school today. Hey, I don't know. Also tomorrow, we have a round robin tournament. Tomorrow's their first baseball games. That's right. They got two baseball games tomorrow. But uh, they didn't have school today. Oh, I caught a big one. Clump of moss. Uh, no school today and pretty much the rest of the Fridays for the rest of the school year. But uh, I thought they were wanting to do something fun. I, I have oh, 15. I you got a bass? Yeah. Well, that gum. Let's see this thing. <laughs> Where'd it go? Thing, so it don't count. Oh, uh, it was close. It don't count though. I saw it splashing. Anyways, as I was saying, I've got about fifteen other things that I really need to be doing today. But uh He took his sweet time out on us. Not my sweet time. I'd much I would much rather be doing this. But Went and bought a bunch of seed to put in that precision um, precision seeder from Woods and got the new tractor all up and going. Hooked the, the Machio flail mower up to it and used it for about 20 minutes yesterday just testing it out. Got a lot of other things I need to be doing. <sighs> but Weston called a few minutes ago and said that uh, he was brush hogging over at the Mill Creek property and something happened to the tractor. If I had to guess, had to bet, um, he's been on it for... I guess day three or four, a couple hours a day. I'm betting um, it overheated on him. Probably got too much grass and dust built up in the air filter oh, and the radiator. So we're gonna catch a few more fish. And I guess I'm gonna run over to Mill Creek and see if I can figure out what's wrong with the tractor because it shouldn't uh, it shouldn't have anything wrong with it, I wouldn't think, unless he busted a hose or something. But all right, let's see what Kobe got. Big old green sunfish, man. He's upside down. Hey, just grab the fish instead of his mouth. When they're small like that, it's easier. Trust me, buddy. Oh, them little. <laughs> they wouldn't take it. What? Kobe's on him, man. And if he doesn't come off because the hook is like very honest. 
Trey, why are you still in my spot? I don't know how he hasn't scared him out. Yeah, lift that one and show him to me. Hold him up with your, with your pole. That one's fat. Yep. <laughs> so we were all looking at this sandbar right here, and you can tell that something's been here. There's been some sort of animal on this sandbar, and I thought maybe it was a beaver, uh, but it's definitely not a beaver. Look at these scales. Those are from those suckers, and there's scales there. There's a pile of scales right there. And come over here. No, I thought I saw some scales over here. But uh, you know what I bet's doing that, Houston? Yeah. Otters. Yeah. I bet you the otters have been laying right here on this little beach, relaxing in the sun, and hopping off down in this deep water and catching those suckers. Did you say 25? Yep. Goodness. Kobe put a hurting on them today. Dad, why am I not catching a single thing? Man, I don't know. How many have you caught? Mm, like 10. No. You're not keeping him. You don't need any more pet bass. Yeah, it is a little bitty. Smallest bass of the day. I mean, this is a micro challenge, so it, it's about winning the smallest. Oh, okay. Caught something. Caught something. Oh, yeah. You got a green sunfish. I see him. Did that fish just kiss you? No. Just set him back easy, bro. Oh, that was I got him. <laughs> I see why the otters have been sitting here eating. There's a lot of fish in this little hole. Maybe we're just going to come here first. I'm still on my road to 27. Almost 30. I'm, I think we're going to get 30. You think you're going to get 30? Yeah, because I'm at 27. So. Already caught one. Sure did. As soon as it hit the water and sank down out there. Houston got one too. Earl, are you messing up the fishing hole? Well, I think we're going to call it quits. On the fishing for now. And I won. You won? Yeah. What'd you win? Oh, I'm going to push you in the creek. No, I'm kidding. I'll, just, huh. I'll go jump off the dam. You'll go jump off. Uh, Kobe caught 30 fish today. Houston caught somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 15. 15, he says. Um, I don't think he was counting. When you, when you start falling behind, you tend to forget to count sometimes. But either way, it's a lot of fun. Um, we're trying to rush summertime. It's not summertime yet. The water deer. is cold and, uh, do what? Got deer tracks? Deer. The water's cold and it's only about 75 degrees today. It's definitely not creek weather, but, uh, I'm going to have to, uh, call it quits early and go head over to the Mill Creek property and see if I can figure out what's wrong with our, uh, with our tractor. Hopefully it's nothing bad. Hopefully it just needs a little antifreeze and uh all the filters air filters and screens and stuff blown out but i don't know we'll go see Freeze. It's the second time this tractor's overheated, and uh, it's really not even summertime yet. It overheated on me one day, mowing just a little bit at the merchandise property. 
Now it's overheated on Weston here, so I'm gonna let this loader down. Let's see if we lost much antifreeze. Last time it just kind of burped a little bit up. It really didn't, um, it overheated and kind of boiled over a little bit, but I mean, it was just maybe a cup or two. Well, there's a problem. It definitely spewed over. I, fear, I see a problem. All right, I actually see a couple problems. So the main thing is the screen needs to be cleaned off for sure. And uh, I'll pull the air filter out and check it, but that's why we're losing antifreeze. I mean, when the cap pops off, you know, that's a problem. Um, we're not uh, we're not really low on antifreeze in the uh, the reservoir here. It's it needs um, some more added, but it hasn't spewed over too much. But I'll check the radiator and make sure we're still good. I'm gonna pull that screen, pull the filter, but I think we'll be all right. Here's your problem right there. Take it back up to the house and get a leaf blower and blow all the rest of the dust out of the radiator and stuff. But this was a uh, this was worrying me. I had to stop what I was doing. I told Houston Jacoby I need to come over here and check on this because I wasn't sure if we had a big problem or not. Definitely got a dirty air filter. I kind of suspected that though. I'm going to have to make sure Weston knows what what he needs to do to clean these uh clean the dust off of this for sure wash the radiator off we'll make sure he knows he was fixing to hop in the shower when i got to the house so i just came down here by myself but a lot of dust in the air filter need to probably need to get a new one anyways all it takes about every four five six hours operation just clean that screen clean all the junk off of that you can pull that screen out try to clean the radiator up a little bit from both sides just keeps the dust out yep well thankfully it was nothing big not a bad issue to fix um i did show him how to take care of all the the maintenance when you're brush hogging and stuff and make sure the filter's clean and clean all the dust out and blow it and wash and clean everything i'm gonna pick up some more antifreeze for him this uh this weekend he's gonna be gone so uh luckily we're all good to go the micro fishing challenge went great kobe caught like 30 fish used to call like 15 or 20 or i don't know micro fishing it's just something a little bit different but anyways guys that's all i've got for today i've got to hustle get back to the house and feed because Emily is going to her first prom tonight and I've got about an hour and a half to get all my chores done, get cleaned up and get to prom pictures. I'm not going to prom, I'm getting the pictures for prom. But anyways, guys, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. You guys have a great day. And as always, we'll see you on the next video.